I'll kick things off. So our presentation today is going to be about five things you should do to prepare for a PDM upgrade, and then three additional things that you should avoid at all costs when upgrading PDM. Um, if you attended 3D Experience World, this presentation was given at 3D Experience World, and it's going to be about the same material that was given them. Um, so today we're going to go over the necessary PDM upgrade preparation that you got to do beforehand uh, to make sure your upgrade is successful. Um, we're going to go over conquering the upgrade process and make sure you got everything down before you get started. Um, and then avoiding some common upgrade pitfalls that we see uh, day to day in our jobs. Um, so this is really meant to be for a PDM administrator that's going to be taking on an upgrade or their IT department that's going to help them take on that upgrade. Um, so before we get too far into it, let's go through a quick little introduction. Uh, my name is Hannah Harmon. I am the uh, senior PLM support engineer at uh, Inflow. Um, so my job is to field all of our support calls that come in day to day. And many, many, many of those calls have to do with upgrades and, and what you need to do and what they can do beforehand or if they get stuck after an upgrade. So we see a lot of things on our support team uh, surrounding upgrades and that's what I do day to day. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Justin so he can introduce himself and explain a little bit about Inflow as well. Thanks, thanks, Anna. Uh, uh, this is Justin Webster, Senior Vice President of Inflow. Um, just to give everybody a little bit of a uh, understanding of who Inflow is, um, uh, Inflow was founded in 2001 as a division of Computer Aid Technology, and uh, our primary responsibility is, um, is supporting and servicing our customers in their um, PDM and PLM implementations. And so we've been working with the SolidWorks PDM products since. Um, around 2006, 2007, um, and I've been with the company since uh, 2004, um, so going on 16 years. And I think I was about uh, 11 in 2004, so um, I haven't been here quite that long. Uh, but uh, moving on, uh, just the key takeaways that you want to take from this presentation, presentation today, um, and they'll be up at the top right corner of every slide, and you'll see what kind of where this falls into. Um, but like I said before, we're going to go through what to prepare for the upgrade, uh, sticking to the plan and getting the process down for an upgrade, and then again, watching out for those pitfalls and uh, making sure you don't fall into any common errors that we see. Um, and then watch out for these administrator pro tips here uh, while we're going through the slides. They're just some extra tidbits of information that we fall into and see all the time that are just really good practices um, for the upgrade process. Um, so like I said, the title of the presentation, five do's, three don'ts, uh, just to lay it all out for you guys right here. So the five do's, we're going to want to plan, we're going to want to back up the data, we're going to want to test uh, the new version with our own data, um, we're going to want to prepare the users beforehand so they know what's going on, and then take the time during this upgrade to, to clean up your server, clean up some old messes, and make sure everything's running like it should. On the other side of the fence, what you don't want to do during an upgrade is uh, wait until the last minute. Uh, we see that all the time. It's really bad to do. Um, we don't want to assume that the backups that we've taken all year round are foolproof and that they're going to get us out of a sticky situation. We really want to go through that plan and just make sure it's working. Um, and then finally, and kind of the cheesiest one, don't be afraid to reach out to your reseller and ask questions um, and get help where you need it. Uh, so let's dive in. We're just going to take these one by one, and you'll hear me and Justin going back and forth. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Justin for the first one to talk about creating a solid upgrade plan and preparing for the upgrade. Thanks, Anna. Um, so like the uh, the heading of the slide indicates, really the one of the keys to be successful is to create a plan. And um, it's a plan that you can turn into a living document, like it's mentioned below. Um, the process itself would not change much from release to release, and so it is important to start uh, uh, build out a document that you can follow and that you can uh, distribute to others on your team. And um, it starts with some of the basics, so determining the right version. Um, right now, we're in the uh, in that kind of middle ground where some people are looking to go to 2020, um, others are still looking to go to the latest service pack of 2019. So make sure you identify that. Um, understanding the pros and cons of those different releases and what those are going to bring to you. Um, also look to see if there's any issues or concerns that, that you may have to work, uh, work around with that particular version of software. Um, 
you're always going to take this opportunity if you don't have it already to build yourself a diagram of server names, accounts, get the passwords you need to uh, properly execute the, um, uh, the upgrade itself. Um, right now, the, um, the downloads for the entire software package are somewhere in the, I don't know, 13 to 15 gig or something like that. Make sure you have that software downloaded, stage it in the various uh, servers where you might need it. Um, verify, and this is one of the things that fourth bullet is one of the things that uh, we have seen uh, bite some customers is really a system and hardware requirements. Are you going to go out of uh, spec on an OS, maybe a version of SQL? Um, and uh, so maybe you need to make some hardware changes or database changes or something like that. Um, Gather up your host names, um, users, make sure you're not going to miss any users in the upgrade or if they're going to get client upgrades. Um, make sure you have all your licenses up to date. Don't wait to the last minute for that. Uh, make sure you're currently on maintenance or not going to go out of maintenance anytime soon. Um, as far as um, just getting prepared, validate uh, your backups. Um, Make sure you read the installation guide or review that process. Talk with your reseller about that. Um, and then one of the last things, um, it, it, before you, um, uh, you know, start down this process, uh, make sure you un have a good understanding of who else it impacts in the business. And so um, that's looking at things like software packages that connect to it, any integrations you have with other systems like ERP. Uh, make sure you document all those so you have a good feel for uh, for what to test um, to validate your system is ready for the upgrade. Yeah, and like we said here at the bottom, just putting this in a document and keeping it in your uh, SharePoint, your company directory or something like that on your network, uh, and then going back to it every year and updating it as you go, um, that's just gonna save you tons of time when you start the upgrade process so you don't have to start from scratch every year and go through this. Okay, team, we also have our first question here. Going, going back to that, that good planning, um, this is from Inga, wants to know, um, where can I find an overview of the changes between PDM versions, say like 18 and 19 or 19 to 20? And also with that, um, if there's any updates in service packs. Um, yeah, I can answer that. Uh, so every single year, SolidWorks releases what's called a What's New Guide for SolidWorks, and it also includes uh, PDM in it as well. Um, so that gets installed with the installation manager, but if you also just Google uh, SolidWorks What's New 20 in the year, um, you'll get a pretty comprehensive PDF of every single feature that they really added to the software. Um, we also do blog series and things uh, on Inflow, where you can check our website and and keep up with the blog to see the the biggest features that have changed for 2020. We usually do that around like September and October before the major release, and they're archived on there if you ever wanted to see them. Um, for service packs, SolidWorks doesn't usually add new features in, um, but they do fix bugs. So if you there's a place on their website you can go to um, to look up all of the bug fixes per service pack. It's actually I think right where you download the service pack from underneath it. Um, and it has just a list of every, uh, the release notes and the fixes that they had in that service pack, but we generally don't see new features in a service pack. Awesome. Thank you, Hannah. No problem. Um, so the next thing we wanted to talk to you is, uh, is backing up your data before an upgrade. Um, you should be backing up your data periodically, uh, doing nightly backups, weekly backups, monthly backups, things like that. Um, but one of the most critical times to look at your backups and to make sure you have a backup right before you begin is an upgrade. Um, the reason for that being uh, upgrading is somewhat dangerous, somewhat risky to do. Um, and making changes to your server, there's always a risk of your server just not having it anymore, blue screening, causing problems like that, that can really bring you down. There's also a risk of coming into a situation after your upgrade where you find out that you really weren't compatible for the upgrade or there's another program that's uh has trouble with the upgrade and then you'll have to roll back to an older version um so you want to make sure you have a clean nice backup right before the upgrade so that if something uh catastrophic happens afterwards that you can go back to it and not miss out on a big chunk of data um so for pdm there are two mission critical upgrades that you will 100 percent need to restore a pdm environment 
Um, without one of these or the other, your PDM environment is basically useless. Um, the first of those upgrades is the PDM Firewall database backup from uh, SQL. It's taken through SQL Management Studio itself. Um, this is the brains of your PDM environment. This is what has all the file names, the metadata, the references, everything like that. Without this, you don't know anything about any of your files, and they're just useless coded hexadecimal. On the flip side of that, there's also the archive files backup of your environment. This is 16 Windows folders on your archive server. They're labeled 0 through F in hexadecimal, and they contain every file that's in your PDM environment. So if you were to ever do some exploring and look in these folders, and you opened up a SOLIDWORKS file in here, um, it would just be a folder of randomly, well, they're not really random, they're coded uh, named files named zero or one through however many versions you have in hexadecimal, um, along with an index file to kind of tell it what's in there. Um, if you were to look at this file, you'd have no idea what you're looking at. There is kind of a file name somewhere in the index file, and you can maybe piece it together. But really, without the SQL database, you would never be able to figure out and rename and tie these files back together. So you need both of these files to ever have any chance of restoring your PDM environment. Um, there's two additional backups that we like to have you take. They're much smaller, and they're actually much less critical to your system. Uh, the first is an archive server settings backup. This is basically the registry on your archive server. It's not exactly the registry, so don't just uh, copy the registry out because it has some encryption in it. Um, but basically, it just has the settings and some passwords and some users for your PDM environment and also some connections and things like that that it makes. Um, this can be restored, but we lose some data and it takes a lot of time to make that from scratch. Um, the other a uh, non-critical backup is the Kinesio Master Database from SQL. Um, it's just a secondary database uh, that you have one per PDM environment, and it just does some licensing stuff and some stuff with the uh, database server service. Um, it can be recreated, but again, it would involve adding things to tables and things like that, and it's just easier if you have a backup of it. Um, so real quick, I just wanted to play a video of, of where do you go to get these backups and how do you grab them? Um, so as you're looking here, this is a SQL Management Studio. And I only have one real PDM vault in my SQL instance here, um, and that's this Acme test vault. You also see that Kinesio Master DB here. Even if you only have one vault, you always have two databases in your PDM environment. Um, so we're going to go ahead and grab a backup of our main Acme vault by right clicking on it and going to Tasks, and then Backup. Um, and here's just how to grab one manual backup from SQL. Um, you'll see the database is Acme. We'll always want to grab a full backup of it, uh, back up the database component, and then back it up to a disk location. Um, you can remove what's there and just add another location here. I think in my little video here, I go to a second drive, and then I put in a folder named backups that are definitely not on the same drive and machine as PDM. Um, the reason you don't want to put it on the same drive and machine as PDM when you're doing an upgrade is because if there is a catastrophic failure during your upgrade and your server goes down, if your backup is on your server, you're going to have a hard time getting to it. Um, so we're going to throw that there on the E drive and hit OK. Um, and then while we're still in SQL Management Studio, you might as well just grab this Kinecio backup as well. Um, so again, same process. You're going to go to Tasks, Backup. Um, and you can remove the drive that's there and add your own location here. Um, and I think I just throw it on the same drive. Uh, yep, that backup location. And then we just give it a file name. This time we're just going to call it the Kinesio backup. And, you know, throw a nice date on there so you know when it's from and you don't get it confused with another one. And then you should put this uh, file extension at the end. It's just .bak. Um, it'll just need that extension to restore from. If you forget to add the extension, which I always do, you can always go back and add it in Windows Explorer uh, later, which I think I did in this instance. Um, so now that we have the SQL backups, the next thing we want to do is get the archive backups. And I'm going to pause this real quick. So um, generally, your archive backups, you have them just on the root of a drive somewhere that you told it to be when you first installed it. Um, if someone else installed it or you don't remember where you told it to put the archives when you first set up your vault years ago, um, the easiest way to find it and the most surefire way to find it is to look in the Windows registry of your server. If you jump in the Windows registry here, 
It's always in the same location here. It's going to be in local machine, software, SolidWorks, applications, PDM works enterprises, archive server, vaults, and then your vault name, and then under that archive table. I have that memorized. I understand if you don't. Um, if you ever need that location, feel free to reach out to us. But as you see here, you'll see there's uh, all 16 folders in here. Normally, they'll all be in the same location, but if your vault's gotten really big, you can definitely split these off and put them in other drives so that you might have some things in one drive split into two drives. I've even seen some people split them into eight drives or 16 drives when they get that big. Um, so just double check here and you can verify where all the files are and where they're getting put to in PDM. Um, and then you can just go to that location in Windows. If you have a nice fancy backup software to grab all this, by all means use it. If not, feel free to just copy and paste. It's going to get you the same amount of data that we need for this backup. Just might take a very long time and it might fail out if you have terabytes and terabytes of data. Luckily, I only have like two files in this vault. So we're good there. Um, and then as you see right here, I did forget to put that back on my database backup. So I threw it on there real quick. Um, so that takes care of the two mission critical backups. We have the SQL database. We have the archives now. Um, the last thing you'll want to grab just for sake of uh, consistency and having everything is just the archive server settings backup. Um, so this tool that I'm in right now is called the archive server configuration tool. Um, you can open it from the start menu. On a lot of servers, you'll see that you'll click on it on the start menu and it won't actually launch. That's because it's already running in the system tray. So if you come down to your, to your system tray in the bottom right hand corner, and look for this little icon that looks like a PDM Blueberry with a little folder on it. You can click on that and say open and it'll bring up this tool. In this tool, all you have to do is go to tools, backup settings and pick the vault you want to back up. You can select all of them if you want to. Uh, pick a location uh, to put it. We'll just throw it in the exact same spot that we've been throwing everything else. And then right here, there's a schedule. You can schedule this to occur every day if you want. Um, you can also put a password on it, and when you're done configuring this, you just say launch, and it's just going to create a little tiny .dat file for you that has all of your archive settings in it. Just know that this isn't your actual archive data. This is just the registry settings for it. This is just going to tell us and make it easier for us to restore that archive if everything ever goes wrong. Um, so. That's really it. That's all you have to do to get the backups. I know a lot of you probably have bigger plans in place and uh, cloud solutions and things like that from other companies. Um, but if you're really just thinking, how do I quickly back up my PDM environment and take it offline? This this is how you do it. Uh, simple, easy way. Um, one point, point I have to make on backups is make sure you have multiple locations, multiple plans, and that you've reviewed these plans uh, just to make sure that you're covered in any situation. Um, except for like really good cloud solutions, I found that no solution is 100% foolproof. There's different things that can go wrong in any type of environment. Um, so just try to think through all the things that can happen in your environment um, and come up with a plan and a restore plan for all of those. We also have some tips later in the presentation about, about what those things are and, and how to protect from different things. Um, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Justin because we're still in the prep preparation phase and we're going to go over testing out um, the newer version of PDM. So, Justin. Oh, thank you. Um, so, next we're going to go through um, just the, uh, the process for uh, getting prepared from a testing side. And so, um, the number one thing that we found, you know, helps in the, in the upgrade success is really being able to properly test and test using your data and your processes. And so, um, you may be wondering, okay, how do I test something that I've not upgraded yet? Um, uh, really, you need a test server. And so if you don't have a test server, um, you know, a test workstation, some ability to build the environment on a test machine is preferable. Um, we know a lot of people are using virtual um, environments right now as well. So technically, you could clone your existing environment or, like I said, set up a server for testing. Um, uh, if you didn't do your initial install of your um, PDM environment, you may need some help from your reseller. So please reach out um, to get that help. Um, there are some how-to guides on how to install, um, but really what we're going to be doing uh, when we set up a test environment is installing your current environment. And then we're going to take your data from your production environment and copy that over to your test environment. 
and then we're going to simulate the upgrade. So the whole process has to be simulated. Um, it's not as easy as just doing an install. There is some um, uh, a little bit of trickiness to it. A bit of it is covered in some of the guides, but uh, reach out to us uh, to get some help on at least how to track down those guides if you need. Um, we also offer services and things for like that for actually setting up the test servers if you do need that support. Um, things that you can do in advance, um, you can upgrade your license manager. It is backwards compatible, so you could upgrade your production license manager technically to the newer version and should, should still support your existing versions. Um, if you need, let's say, copies of SQL, there's a developer edition of SQL you can download. Um, you don't have to pay for that. Um, use it for your testing and then uninstall it and you should be perfectly fine. Um, one of the things we do recommend is uh, always test on the version and service pack that you're going to be using for your upgrade. So um, right now, if you're, let's say, testing on service pack two, and by the time you're ready to go, service pack four is out. The, uh, you might want to just jump right to service pack four. Um, I would definitely recommend against that, um, just simply because each service pack might have its own individual issues. And um, although that risk is somewhat low, um, you wouldn't want to find that out after you've upgraded 30 clients and have your entire you know, engineering team out. So uh, make sure that you test the process fully from, from your current service pack and inversion to the service pack inversion you intend to go to. Um, and then always test your um, Michigan, mission critical files and processes. So things that are, you're currently working on, things you're familiar with. Um, again, this goes back to the planning side. You can document this as well and turn this into user acceptance testing or upgrade testing that you can then deploy for the next upgrade, you know, next year and, and so on. So as part of that plan, you would want to include the test procedures that you're going to use to validate. Uh, and that way, if something does come up in production, you can go back to these tests and say, well, let me see what changed um, outside of what I tested. Um, and that way you can, you, you can help in the troubleshooting process as well if something does happen. Uh, post-production upgrade. Along with, with testing your new version, one thing you want to do is get your, your users involved at this point. And especially if you're an IT person performing this upgrade, um, you're not going to have usually the knowledge to test the actual uh, files and processes that are most critical to the engineers because that's just not your day-to-day -day and not what you're working with. So get some power users involved that are really into PDM and like PDM. Um, and have them do some of the testing for you. Not only will it offload uh, some of your work, uh, but it'll also, you'll be more confident that um, the tests got done on, on real files and mission critical stuff because they know what they're using every day. Um, and on that note, uh, we're gonna get into a little bit about uh, other ways to prepare your users uh, for an upgrade. Uh, so one of the worst things you can do is just uh, shut down the system on a Friday afternoon and not tell your users and knock them out of the system. A lot of the times they're working on mission critical projects in PDM and they, and they need files and they need to be working on something to get it out the door at the end of the day. So make sure your users know when the upgrade is taking place. Uh, make sure they know weeks beforehand, uh, months beforehand if you need to. I know some people prepare for, for weeks and months for this, so just get them involved. Um, a great way to get them involved is to do maybe a little what's new presentation to them or just sending them out via email blasts. Uh, like we mentioned before, Inflow does a ton of content for what's new in the October or September before a major release every year. Um, so if you're looking for content or looking for new features to kind of get your users excited about an upgrade, feel free to visit our website there. It's uh, inflow-tech.com slash blog. And we do a series every year as well as the CATI website as well. Um, so if you're doing a SOLIDWORKS upgrade in tandem with this, there's also tons of great content on the CETI side for the SOLIDWORKS upgrade of this. Um, so that's what you're going to do a couple weeks out. So what do you want to do the day before or the night before an upgrade? Um, the last thing you want to have your users always do is check in all the files that they're using. Um, I will say that it's not going to break the files if they don't check them in. A lot of people call um, asking right before an upgrade, getting anxious because a file won't check back in because it hasn't been checked in in two years and it's it's a broken file. Um, so you don't really have to worry about 
things like that, test files, things like that. Really what we wanna make sure is that all of their critical work has been checked into the server before you perform those backups. So before you take your last backup, before your upgrade, make sure all of their critical work has been checked into the server. They don't have hundreds of files checked out that you might have to clean up in a uh, catastrophic situation and that everything is controlled in one central place uh, for you just in case something goes wrong. Um, so if they do check everything in and they come to you and they say, I, I really have to get this project out today. I know you're upgrading today, but I still need to work on it. They can use what's called work offline mode in PDM during the upgrade process. And they can still continue to work while you're working through the server upgrades and all of your archive upgrades and maybe your web upgrade as well. Um, so to do this, I'm going to show a quick video of what you'd have a client do um, prior to an upgrade on their machine. Um, so the first thing you'd want them to do is find their checked out files. And the fastest way to do that is to get this complete search card that comes with every PDM environment. Come to this check in, check out tab, uh, uncheck that display non checked out files, and then find their name in the list. Uh, they'll run a search here and it'll come back with everything they have checked out. Maybe it's just a few things this time, maybe it's hundreds. Uh, first thing they want to do is just highlight all of them, check them in, and if they do need to work on them later on, they can check this secondary box here to keep them checked out in their name. This is going to push that latest version to the server, but also keep it so that they can make changes to it during the upgrade. Once they have everything checked out that they want, they're going to go through the vault and find anything else that they might need to reference. They don't need to change these files, but they need the parts and maybe a toolbox and a template to reference. So they're going to go through the vault and do a git operation on any of those files. And then finally, when they're happy with everything that they have, they're going to come to tools and hit this work offline button. This is going to bring up this little interface that kind of shows a really old computer disconnecting from a really old server. Um, and it's going to turn their, their folders blue and anything that they have locally cached is going to show up in here. They're going to lose a lot of the columns and things like that, but they're just going to have this writable column. And the writable column is going to tell them, yes, I did check this out and it is writable, or no, I did not check this one out and I can't make changes to it. Uh, so while you're doing the upgrade, they can go through and continue to work on their files. Um, if they did make critical changes to a file during the upgrade process and then you get around to their client to upgrade them, the one thing we'd probably have you ask them do uh, before you hit that button to upgrade their SOLIDWORKS is just to take those critical files that they changed during the upgrade process and do a copy or a pack and go of them out of the vault, um, put them safely on a thumb drive or on their desktop, and then do their client upgrade. The file should be fine after the upgrade, but just in case we like to have that backup so they don't lose the work that they've been doing all day during the upgrade. Um, so that's really all I have for uh, the. Oops, sorry. That's all I have for the uh, user pre preparedness. Um, but there's one more thing we want to have everyone do um, before upgrading your PDM environment, and this is kind of things that you've been putting off all year, or probably maybe for the last five years, and that's cleaning up all of the messes in your PDM environment. Um, so take the time when you're getting ready for your upgrade. You already have this living document out. You already have everything you're going through. Take the time to prepare and make sure that your environment is going to be good for the next year. Your performance is going to be good for the next year. And just double check everything in your environment. So if you're on PDM Pro, you probably have a ton of maintenance plans in SQL that are backing up data and cleaning up indexes and things like that running. So check and make sure those are all still running. Um, check and make sure the disk space is good for those backups. One of the worst things we can find is getting into a customer environment after they've had a catastrophic event and finding out that their drive filled up last July and they haven't been backing anything up since then. Um, so again, don't, don't assume that all of your maintenance plans are running and foolproof. Make sure to check them periodically probably a lot more than once a year, but at the very least, please check them during your upgrade once a year. Um, another thing to check is the disk space of your archive server. Um, a lot of the archive for PDM is going to be filling up all the time, and it's going to be filling up pretty fast in a lot of companies, because um, every time you check in a file, it's going to put another copy of that file on your archive server. 
Um, so making sure that you have the disk space that you need and that you have enough disk space to get through next year is going to be critical. Um, and if you find that you're running low on disk space and you might not make it another year, start coming up with a plan now. It's not always easy on all servers to just add more space or add another drive. Um, a lot of times in newer virtual environments, it is kind of OK to do that. Um, but just make sure you have a plan. What you don't want to run into is actually running out of space. Um, you will start seeing file corruption. You will start seeing a ton of errors. Your users will start not being able to really do anything in PDM. Um, and then you'll be scrambling at the last minute. So just making sure you have that space ahead of time and you can make it through the next year or starting to come up with a plan now if you don't. Um, a couple more just spring cleaning tasks you might want to do during this time is uh, cleaning up your admin tool, deleting old users and templates and test faults that you don't use anymore. A lot of this stuff doesn't really kill your performance at all or take up too much space, but as it builds over time, you're just going to be scrambling through lists of old users and lists of old templates just trying to find what you need. Take the time now, do the spring cleaning now, and make sure your environment stays clean for not only you, but maybe for your predecessor later down the road. Um, and then finally, the last thing I, I like to have people look at during their upgrade process is their deleted items folder in PDM. There's a surprising lot of people that don't even know that this exists. So if you right click on any folder in your entire PDM vault, um, right here I'm clicking on the root and go to the properties. There's a tab that says deleted items. This is basically a recycling bin for PDM. Now in my example, I'm just going to show all of the files in my whole vault by including this subfolder because my vault is small. And you'll see that Justin deleted a ton of files here and they're just sitting in this recycling bin. So you can go by the dates, you can go by all this stuff, but if you right click on them and say destroy, that's going to get them completely out of your vault, take the space out of your archive server and take the space out of SQL. Um, just a couple notes on that. If you do have a big environment and your vault is very large and people are deleting things all the time, don't do what I just did on the root level. Uh, go find a smaller subfolder first and just check and see how the performance goes with destroying those files uh, before you take on the whole vault. Um, in very big environments, sometimes you will have to do this uh, off hours or on a weekend to really destroy files. Um, while a destroy command is, is fairly quick in SQL because we're re literally just throwing out data, um, it still can some take, take some time because every file not only has a file entry in SQL, it has version entries and variable entries. So if you have a lot of things and metadata associated with a file, um, it can be deleting hundreds of rows for just a single file. Um, so just keep that in mind and start small and work your way up. Uh, even if uh, you don't have a lot of files, we just don't want to lock up your system during production just to do this cleanup. Um, so once you got it under control, it usually runs a lot faster. But if you hadn't looked at that before or you haven't looked at it in a very long time, I would just take your time and try not to tie up your whole production doing that. So, so Hannah, we had one come across here from Clint. Um, it, it sounds like a very dangerous button that if it was able to be created, but can you schedule the destroy all? Um, I don't think there's anything in the system right now that can do this. Uh, Justin, do you know of any API or anything like that that anyone has been successful with before? Although you could probably do it in the API. Um, uh, and so a program could be built to do this. There's nothing out of the box that could do it. I think I think SolidWorks keeps the destroy all button out of there just because it sounds very scary. <laughs> uh, I agree. <laughs> but um, oh. another question there: um, Does deleting old user profiles affect the history of files that were created and modified by that user? Um, so a little bit, yes. So when you delete a user out of the admin tool. Um, their user entry in the SQL database side gets truncated or gets a prefix of deleted on such and such date, and they will be maintained in the history. Um, so it'll look a little bit different, but it'll still keep their history and things like that. They just won't be cluttering up your admin tool and making your user list take forever to load. 
Um, and they actually can be restored if you just delete them through the admin tool um, through the backend SQL database. Um, so that covers our five things to do during a PDM upgrade. So we're going to switch gears a little bit and go through our three don'ts. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Justin to talk about waiting until the last minute. Thanks, Anna. And so, um, so first of our don'ts, like Anna mentioned, is uh, you know don't wait to the last minute uh, to do your upgrade. Um, and we've seen this a number of times where um, you know somebody will get files from a customer for the new version of SOLIDWORKS and realize they can't open it and decide, OK, well, let's just upgrade this week and see how it goes. Um, obviously, waiting to the last minute, you're you're not able to um, uh, get all the testing procedures like we talked about. You're not able to validate all the things that we talked about earlier in the presentation. So um, uh, so typically speaking, um, you can't really plan accordingly if you're if you give yourself just a short amount of time. Um, also, uh, if you wait to, let's say, I'm going to upgrade on a Friday, so let's just get it started. Um, you might run into situations where you might need some help from your reseller. Let's say you don't, you didn't get your new license file and, and it's a Saturday or something like that. Um, if a lot of this stuff hasn't been validated and tested ahead of time, um, you may not be able to get your, um, uh, get the, let's say, the upgrade even executed that weekend. So we've seen plenty of instances where, and I'm sure Hannah's gotten many calls and seen many emails on Saturdays and Sundays from people who forgot to get their license files. Um, FYI, that's a red flag. We know you didn't test if that's the case. And so um, when the uh, when those requests come in, we're not able to always get help from SolidWorks, and you're not able to reach us in in all in all cases as fast as you may need us. And so um, um, to do it right. Um, don't wait to the last minute to ask for your license files, or if you're going to bypass the whole testing process, uh, at least make sure you get that planning document um, established ahead of time so you can get some of these things addressed. Um, downloads, um, um, getting all your server names and everything, uh, getting the passwords you need, the rights you need on your servers, those are all keys. And so um, there's been lots and lots of cases where we've been working with one of our clients and they might even bring us to help with the upgrade and we start helping them with the upgrade and they realize that um, I didn't realize that this particular site, it's going to take four hours to download software from the SolidWorks website. And so then you're basically stuck for those hours waiting for this download. Um, so really just don't take anything for granted. Make sure you're totally prepared by having all this information. Uh, and all the downloads and everything you need in advance. Um, once you um, once you do start that upgrade process, um, you'll want to be able to kick the users off the system. Um, you can do that by essentially shutting down your SQL processes and essentially shutting down the system for a bit. Um, it gets everybody kicked off, um, but then you're going to use um, something called a block logins uh, to enforce that to keep um, people from logging back in while you're uh, doing the final steps uh, to start your upgrade. Awesome, yeah. And uh, so the next thing we don't want to do is, and what we talked about earlier with the backups, is assuming that our backups are foolproof and that they're going to work in every situation. So take the time during this upgrade process to review your backups, review your plan, and make sure that everything works. Uh, the best way to do this is actually to take those regular scheduled backups that you're doing, those weekly backups or monthly backups or things like that, pick one of them and use that to restore the test environment that Justin was talking about earlier. Um, that way you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. You can set up your test environment and you can also make sure that your backup plan that you're using, you can recover from in the worst case scenario. Um, and so do that dry run, walk through the SQL restore, the archive restore, the settings, uh, make sure you can connect everything together and there's not a giant hole in your backup process that isn't going to allow you to work. Um, and then the last thing with backups is just making sure you're covered in every situation for data recovery. Um, there's a lot of things that can go wrong with PDM. I see them every single day. Um, one of the most common is going to be like a hardware failure for PDM. So making sure that your backups aren't just on the same server is a great way to just stop you from running into that situation. 
Um, backups on the same server do have their place. If you have a if you have a user that just went in and accidentally like destroyed a bunch of data by accident or rolled back a bunch of data, then a quick recovery from a backup on the server is going to be great for that. But in almost every other scenario, that's not really going to help you. Um, another big one that we've been seeing a lot come through on technical support is ransomware attacks. Ransomware attacks have gotten really, really crazy and really, really bad these days. Um, I've probably, I probably get a call uh, once a week to once every two weeks of someone that was hit at least partially by ransomware, whether it just be a user, um, a, a server, or in the worst case scenario, we've seen it hit an entire network. Um, so if all your backups are on your network and you don't have anything old school backed up to tape or new school backed up to the cloud, then you're kind of stuck where you either have to pay $10,000 or, or bitcoins um, to random unnamed person overseas to get your uh, PDM environment back or you're really just starting from scratch. Um, or from the local caches of your engineers, which in a lot of situations you're clearing those because you don't want them to take data off site. Um, so you really get stuck in a really hard situation with ransomware. And then the last thing we hit on sometimes with uh, PDM is, is actually natural disasters too. We've, we've seen server rooms catch on fire or server rooms flood. Um, so if all your backups are on tape, but they're in the same room as your server and something happens. Uh, that's another scenario that you can't really recover from. So with all of these, um, the best solution you're probably going to have from your perspective is going to be cloud. Um, but the, the problem with cloud that we run into and the problem we see on support with cloud is that you're really going to have to be your own advocate with a cloud backup system because a lot of those systems take uh, snapshots or things like that of the server and they use programs and things that we are unfamiliar with from our perspective. Um, so if you're using a snapshot program or a cloud-based program, you're gonna have to know that yourself how to recover from it. Because if you get us involved and you just hand us a snapshot, we're not gonna know how to use that system. So if you're using a great snapshot or cloud-based solution, that is great. Just make sure that you've done that recovery and you know how to get back from it and you know how to work that software. Um, and then the last thing, the last tiny problem with snapshots is that a snapshot generally doesn't understand SQL databases in a lot of cases. Um, so that snapshot will grab that SQL database as the database and not as a .back file. And it could grab SQL while it's in the middle of a transaction. So if you're taking it in the middle of the night, you're probably going to be OK. But if you're taking that snapshot during a time that a user was checking in a large amount of files or an administrator was changing a workflow, you could grab SQL in somewhat of a hung state. And then if we try to recover from that, we might see that we're unable to because tables are locked and things are corrupted because we grabbed it in a really bad state. Um, so just make sure you know your backups, um, you know how they work, and you have a solution in place for any scenario that you run into. And then finally, I'll turn it back to Justin for our last don't. Thanks, Anna. Um, so, so finally, um, you know, the last thing is, you know, the reason why uh, we're here is, you know, don't be afraid to ask questions. And so um, um, we have a support team that's available 12 hours a day for, um, for questions and other people on the team that can help. Um, um, some of our customers will actually uh, contract us to help them with their upgrade. And sometimes it's just really just to be that um, uh, insurance policy in, in case something goes wrong. Um, we do hundreds of upgrades a year, and so generally we've seen just about everything. Uh, most of the time, uh, failures can be just avoided with some of the steps we talked about earlier, uh, proper planning, proper testing. Um, but we'd always recommend as you're going through this process, if you're doing it yourself, it's always best to um, just stop and ask a question. Um, and for that reason, you know, at least what we'd recommend if you do want to reach out to us for help, um, it is best to be able to do your upgrade, you know, during, uh, during our support hours at the very least. And that way, if you do get stuck, um, it's best not to just assume, well, I think I know what I'm doing here. Let me just go through it. Or you get maybe a weird message you didn't expect and, you're unsure whether or not to hit OK or cancel or something, it's best just to stop and ask the question. Um, so try to get somebody on the line to, to help get through that spot. Um, 
in some cases you can't undo that if if you've uh, gone down the wrong path. Um, so if you want, you can always send us your upgrade plans so you can tell us, okay, this is what I think I'm going to be doing. This is what I've done so far. What do you think? Um, and you can get us that information really early in the process, even if you need some help reviewing your plan. That's totally okay. Um, we'd rather um, review that with you early on than to uh, try to figure out what you did after the fact if there is a, you know, an error um, when you're trying to go live. Um, in addition, um, uh, we can also look up to see if there's any issues with the particular service pack you're going to. Um, we can do a quick search at the time. Um, like Hannah mentioned earlier, you can always look to um, service pack releases and, and version releases to see what's been changed or what's been fixed. Um, but what SolidWorks doesn't really um, distribute is, are, let's say, bugs that, have, um, that are currently active in the current service pack. Um, so that's not always aware, you know, visible to everybody. Um, so if you call, we can we can look that up to see if there's anything that has have at least popped up that we can um, uh, we can discuss with you before you upgrade. Um, and again, that last bullet: if you don't have time to commit to an upgrade, or let's say this is your first time and you want some uh, somebody to look over your shoulder, please reach out to us, and and we can always. Uh, I'll put you in touch with a consultant that can help. I'll turn it back to you, Hannah, for any final questions from the, from the group. Uh, yeah, so just before we go to questions, I just want to challenge every one of you uh, for your next upgrade, whether it be to a later service back of 2020 this year, whether you're still going to like 2019 SP5 later this year, or you're waiting until 2021 in another year. Uh, I just want to challenge you to do these three things for your next upgrade. Um, first one would be to create an upgrade document, a living document about your upgrade for your organization uh, that's unique to your organization and has the data that you need to get through this that's not covered in the generic installation guide. Um, next is to set up that test environment. Um, I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know it takes a lot of time, but your environment with PDM is unique. Everyone has a unique environment. And although SOLIDWORKS has a lot of QA and does a lot of testing, the resellers do a lot of testing when it comes out and everyone does small tests. Um, there's always going to be something unique to your environment that not everyone sees. Um, so it is very critical to test with your own files and your own processes so you know you're covered. Um, and then the third thing I challenge you to do is just to make that schedule. Uh, follow your plan, involve your users, stick to it, um, and just make sure that you can do your upgrade quickly and efficiently uh, when you get to that time. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Thank, thank you, Bob.